Welcome to Haxby Shed and the Diary of a TIG Welding Beginner, Part 5. Now in the last part, I tried some welding with stainless steel, including some work on this rotator, which was moderately successful. And in this part, I'm going to try some work using purge gas. My welding rotator is a fairly new toy, and I've been driving it using the inverter from my shaper. I will get an inverter for the welding rotator later on when I'm ready. And if you've been following the channel, you know I've had some problems with overload tripping. And what I mean is that the inverter was protecting the motor because he thought it was drawing too much current. Now somebody has already commented to say that the motor has to work harder when it's running more slowly. What I'm going to do now is reduce the speed of the motor and you can hopefully see what current it draws. I'll just have to reach across to do this. At this moment the rotator is turning about 1 RPM. So that's about 5 Hz I think. And you can see that it's drawing 0.52 amps. So indeed yes the current does go up as you get down to the bottom of the speed range. Now if I turn this up a little bit you'll quickly see that the current will drop off. Now that's not really turning much faster, um, maybe 2 or 3 RPM, but the current's dropped back quite a lot. So that's a bit of learning. Here's my gas setup. A 10 litre bottle, regulator, two dials, one showing the cylinder pressure, the other one showing the flow rate, and then a flow meter with its individual control. It's a bit cramped here. When I get a new cylinder, I'll go for a 20 litre. That'll bring it up here, and all this will be above this level. be far better. This regulator here is marked off to 25 litres per minute, but the markings are on this side, and they're very difficult to see from the front, which is a bit of a nuisance, to be honest. Anyway, to work with purge gas, I'm going to have to split this line. So this is the line that goes into the welder, so that's for the torch. So I bought a splitter, wasn't expensive, and the idea is to, put the, to split the line and to put this flow meter on one side, and then I've got another flow meter, which I got for a few pounds from the auto jumble, and that'll go on the other side. Now this flow meter reads up to 15 liters per minute, and typically I'm welding at five liters per minute, something like that. So this might be a better gauge to use for the torch and then use this one for the purge gas. So I'll rig this up now so that, um, you know, it'll be easier to see and easy to control. Each of the lines I then control individually with these. Now I'm hoping, because I don't know, that these are, you know, um, graduated, so to speak. I can set the flow using these as opposed to just straight on and off. Here's the two dials I talked about. This one showing the pressure in the cylinder. Now it came at about 200 bar. It's down to about 100, so it's about half full. Then this one, which shows the flow rate. Although there's no gas flowing right now, it reads the rate pretty reliably. So that's about six liters per minute. If I allowed the gas to flow, I would also read it on this gauge here. First time around, this is taking quite a bit of time to set up. At the moment, my gas is on. These are on. So I can release gas by turning this green or this black knob. So if I turn just this one on its own, that's reading 10 litres per minute. And if I turn this one just on its own, That's reading 12 litres per minute. This regulator is set on this dial, which is reading 7 litres per minute. So this gauge must be, you know, relatively approximate. Now I wonder what happens if I turn both of these on. Let's see. 10. And you see how it drops, because it splits it between the two. So that's reading 5. 
and that one's reading 6. Hmm, well, that's probably about right, to be honest. 5 for my torch and 6 for purge. You know, it's worth a, a try, it's a starting point. Slight inconvenience, this gauge I can now see from the front because the scale is on this left side. But this gauge I can only read from the back. Another point to note, um, if these are turned on, if I adjust this, the flow is going to go up in these two. So if I leave that just as I said, I'd have to reduce the flow to the right level using these two screws here. It's just how it is. I've got some tubing for the purge gas and I've got two barbed outlets here. This one a bit too big, this one a bit too small. I'm going to try using this one. I'll just use some hot water to get the tubing on. Now we've got the whole thing assembled. I've got the purge gas tube on, which is clamped at the end here. I'm just going to spray it with some warm soapy water. Because when I first got this welder and I put all this together, after a while I found that I had a leak. Now it was just my inexperience. I hadn't clamped these unions up tight enough. But it's looking okay. And just to satisfy myself, I'm just going to take this off here. And of course then I should hear the gas rushing out. There we are, and that's flowing at 10 litres per minute. Here's a tip. If you do this, don't squirt the water into your welder. I'll let that dry out overnight. This tin has an external volume of about one litre. So my cylinder holds ten times this at atmospheric pressure, but it comes pressurised 200 times. So my cylinder holds 2,000 times this volume of gas at atmospheric. In other words, it's that much when we release it into the air. And then this has a volume of 0.17 litres for a comparison, because look, it's about the same diameter as my tube. And we could probably say this holds a volume of about 0.25 litres. Now, there's a question. If I'm purging the gas from inside here, how long do I have to let the purge gas run for the oxygen to be properly flushed out? And I'd heard something like um, 10 times. So you flush this volume 10 times over and you should be clear of the oxygen. Now, at this size, you know, we're not welding an oil pipeline here. Honestly, if the purge gas is running for, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, it's probably enough to purge it, I would think. I've never done it. I'm doing this from first principles, but I, I think it'll be fine. So what we'll do now is connect up the purge gas to this chuck. We've very conveniently got a hole here, look, so I can block this end up and this end up. I'll use this turkey foil left over from Christmas, and then we'll make sure gas is coming out of this hole, and that'll show that it's purged. I've just pushed a bit of pipe onto the nozzle, which is deep inside here, and we'll cut it off about there, I think. I might melt this, who knows? You don't know till you try, do you? And I'll put some foil in here, put a hole through, put that on, and that will give me my feed. Once I've connected up the pipe to the back of the chuck here, which I'll show you in a moment. I think you get the idea from this foil seal at this end, foil bung at this end. That hole is still exposed. My gas is going to come in from this tube, which connects at the back of this plate here. So now I want to prove that the gas is coming out. So I have this highly specialised piece of equipment, which is a bit of sellotape and toilet paper. If I put that on there, oh, it won't stick because I'm using it the wrong way around. If I put that on there, hopefully when I turn the gas on, this will blow up. Uh, well, when I say blow up, I don't mean blow up. <laughs> 
I've got so many knobs now on this gas setup, I need to find the right one. What do you call that? Christmas tree, isn't it? When you've got loads of valves on a pipe. Here goes. Oh, it's not what I expected. Never mind. It is showing five litres per minute though. Trust me, there is gas coming out. Oh, don't know. After a lot of self-doubt and playing around, I'm quite happy now that there's plenty of gas coming out of that pipe in the centre of the chuck there. There's so many leaks here and there that you don't get a gust of wind coming out of this hole, but I can tell that it is blowing out of there and it's set to 15 litres per minute. I've got my TIG torch on a stand, I've set my gases right, I'm going to use the pedal, strike an arc, no filler wire, see what happens. Mask on. Fail. Well, when the gas came through, the torch flexed and the tungsten touched the work. So I've readjusted it, let's try it again. Well, the first signs are quite good. I'm going to try using some filler wire now, but it's going to be really quite awkward because I'm pedalling with my left foot, filling with my right hand. Let's try it. I couldn't see what I was doing with the torch on the stand, so I'm going to go back to basics and just try it and do it by hand, like this. Well I think I'll leave it there for this one, obviously I need a lot more practice. Hang on a minute, don't go, you might miss this. Even though my welding was rubbish, the purging worked. If you look in there, where I've done these various runs, you can see them how they're oxidised. That big melt through is not oxidised, so the purging worked. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching Haxby Shed. If you're a regular to Haxby Shed, you know that I throw in some quite odd topics sometimes. For Christmas, many men get hankies and socks. It's just the way of things, that's what we get. Not very exciting, is it? But I want to show you these. Now, my wife made me these socks. And I'm not showing off, I'm not saying, hey, my wife made me some socks. What I'm saying is, I think they're amazing. I just can't imagine how she made these. We do some really clever things in the machine shop, don't we? But let me zoom into these. Now, don't comment to me. I didn't come here to look at socks. How? How? <laughs> okay, enough of that.